Hi guys, Pete here, N6QW, and uh, I want to share a little video of my latest project, which is a hybrid single sideband transceiver, uh, two band version, 20 and 40 meters. And the hybrid part comes about that the lower level stages are all vacuum tubes, and the uh, RF stage, the driver and final amplifier, are solid state, and the audio output stage is solid state. I actually started my first uh, single sideband transceiver build vacuum tube version back in the 70s and as you'll see in this project um, the the base plate for the transceiver was part of that original project I was not uh, too successful with it and I subsequently ended up removing all the parts and for some unknown reason kept the base plate so about uh, two years ago I uh, decided I was going to build another vacuum tube uh, a wireless and uh, got that plate and uh, installed some tubes on it and found some coils and what have you and got the receiver working but I never did really get the transport part working so about a month or so ago I decided I'm gonna make that thing work so what you're gonna see in this video is uh, how I put the set together and uh, you'll see once I got it together and got both the transmitter and receiver working I discovered that I had a problem with the uh, transmit and it was a hum problem and uh, we'll discuss that in a video showing uh, how I resolve that problem. So right along with me, this is Pete, N6QW, and uh, follow what I did with the hybrid single sideband transceiver. Hi, Pete here, N6QW, and we're taking a look at our um, hybrid SSB transceiver. It can run two bands, but I currently have it set up for 40 meters right now. So just uh, by way of quick review, front panel has a 16 by 2 LCD. We did have a ILI 9341, but um, that display was subject to transients, RF transients. Uh, hit the push to talk and the display of the spear. So uh, the uh, 16 by 2 uh, is an expedient uh, Just to get something working here, and I'll go back and circle back and find out what the issue with that is Our controls here are mic gain carrier balance RF gain audio gain These two switches here control upper sideband and lower sideband and also let you pick the band of choice as you can see it It's now on 20 meters and 40 meters and then lower sideband upper sideband so, um, you have some pretty nice functionality. There's the hybrid part, or the tube part, and it's got nine tubes there, including a 12AU7, which is the mic amp, two stage, the 6JH8, which is a balance modulator. We have a 6BE6 receive uh, mixer. We have a 12BA6 RF amplifier. We have the 12BE6 transmit mixer. We have the 12 uh, BZ6 first uh, IF amplifier, 12 BA6 second IF amplifier, 12 AV6 uh, tone oscillator for tune-up, although I haven't got that to work just right, so just offsetting the carrier gives you enough for tune-up. And the 12 AX7 here is a combination of uh, product detector, and the other half of it is the first audio amplifier. This is the audio amplifier stage with the NE5534 and an LM380N 14 pin. can put out about 2 watts. This is a transmit pre-driver here, which is the uh, 2N2222. And this is, I didn't have any 2219s. I'm waiting for some to come. So I have a box of 2N3053s. And I built a lot of 7 megahertz uh, QRP CW transmitters using this. And that's in the play and it's working really well in the IR510. We have uh, a bandpass filter here for 40 meters on the transmit section. On the receive section, I have a dual 2040 and it's relay selected. And on the output, I have a W3 NQN uh, 40 meter low pass filter. And so uh, that's all there is to it. Now, initially, 
work everything worked good on receive but on transmit you'd have hum hum on your signal AC hum on your signal and so I thought maybe it was something wrong with a 6JH8 which it sort of turned out to be that way but for a, re a reason otherwise that you wouldn't normally think of and uh, I tried all sorts of things so in desperation I said okay let's try something here let's put uh, some DC voltage uh, on the on the filaments instead of AC and when I did that the hum cleared up and I found out later through a friend of mine that uh, the audio files seemed to like uh, the 6JH8 for an audio mixer tube and they experienced the same thing it's just something about the beam forming plates and uh, the the AC floating around on the filament that uh, gets picked up by and gets modulated so uh, we fixed that problem the IF is 9 megahertz the uh, we're using an Arduino Nano and the SI5351 to generate the LO and BFO signals and uh, uh, on 20 meters it operates at 23 megahertz and on uh, 40 meters it operates on 16 megahertz so 16 minus 9 is 7 23 minus 9 is 14 this uh, box over here is actually a protective cover I'm using a Heathkit HP23 supply to, su to supply some of the uh, plate voltage and screen voltage for the tubes and you have to uh, have a voltage divider off the, the 235 volt screen to get it down to about 185 volts to use for some of the other operations so uh, this has worked pretty well it also has bias in there because we use a grid block uh, to turn on the transmitter and, and turn on the receiver and uh, the relay over there handles some of the function of switching the voltages uh, this follows closely the design of the swan 120 and this plate here actually had a transceiver on it back in the 1970s it didn't work too well so i um, removed all the tubes and the hardware and I just had the plate and it was kicking around the junk box and then uh, two years ago i said you know how to re rebuild that again and i did and so i'm kind of kind of delighted that i did do that and uh the tube lineup was a little bit different and it did have a 6ba6 uh that was used for the carrier oscillator but we didn't need to do that because we're using the SI5351 to provide the carrier oscillator I have a national NCX5 in the background here and we're just uh, cleaning it on and you don't hear much so now I'm going to offset the carrier and then look at the S meter peg and look, uh, let me just uh, change this a little bit so you can see that. That's that's with full carrier with the carrier ball balance offset. And we're getting about, oh, I don't know, something like about uh, 50 or so volts. Uh, 55 volts, 55 volts. If you do the calculation with 55 volts, I'm measuring right at the antenna terminal. This is plugged into a 52 ohm load, 50 ohm load. Uh, if you do that calculation, you're about 7 watts, about 7 watts. So uh, if we do do this, you bring that down to nothing. And the, the values is about 40 dB of carrier suppression. About 40 dB of carrier suppression. There you can see it. Uh, almost down to nothing so anyway um, it's a pretty nice rig here um, I've made quite a few contacts um, I've uh, looked at uh, my signal uh, with only about seven watts I hit the half move bay repeater in the San Francisco Bay Area so that's not too bad I've worked up into Oregon with this and I've worked into uh, Nevada and to Arizona and uh, once I fixed the filament problem uh, signal reports are, have all been good. The uh, first couple couple stations said, man, you got hum in your signal. And so that's what uh, prompted me to look at the, uh, this is the 6JH8. Uh, the 6JH8, initially, if you look at a lot of the transmitters in the uh, early 1960s, they used the 7360 uh, from RCA. 
And those things got to be expensive. As a matter of fact, a, a good one, new in box today, never used, is about 60 bucks. 6JH8 uh, was used in color TV sets in sort of the similar architecture. And uh, may not have all the precise specs of the 7360, but it sure works well. And a lot of the 6JH8s found their way into the Swan 350s and the Swan 500s. Although the earlier uh, Swan radios, the monobanders, and I have the one, uh, 175, the 140, and the 120, they have 7360s in them. Uh, this National has a 7360. It's an earlier, uh, earlier version of the N NCX5, and it has a 7360 buried behind the pl panel here. You, can all, you can't get to it. You have to disassemble part of the transceiver to, to get to the tube. But uh, later they came with the Mark II and Mark III, and that had a had a uh, solid state uh, balance modulator. Did not have the 7360. So anyway, uh, band is afternoon. Band is a little bit dead, and I just wanted to take a little bit uh, time to go over this. I am hopeful of scrunching this down into something on one one piece of board, but. We got this working, and then we said, okay, let me try a driver stage. And when I did that, I found in the junk box an IR510 and just screwed things down to the wood plate. So much to be said for the prototyping, but uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really kind of pleased that uh, we're able to, uh, uh, we're able to get this thing working. And uh, there's the uh, pattern, eeny, meeny, miny, mo testing on the radio, N6QW uh, testing. So anyway, uh, look look forward to maybe getting this on 20 meters and clean th clean up the wiring here so we can uh, so we can be able to uh, operate two bands I have listened a little bit on 20 since I am able to switch the bandpass filters but uh, I don't have a bandpass filter for 20 I did something interesting to, to feed the bandpass filter in the swan series they actually have some two networks and so instead of uh, putting a two network in the plate I put an RF choke and then off that RF choke through a coupling capacitor, I used a 20, to, uh, 20 turn to 2 turn um, uh, FT3743 ferrite core transformer. So the 200, 20 turns to 2 turns, the transform is 400 divided by 4, it's 100 to 1. So essentially, uh, the 50 ohms is on the bandpass filter, but the 5,000 ohms, 10 times, uh, 100 times 50 is 5,000. Is, is looking at the tube so that seems to have worked pretty good I have no I've never seen that done before but um, I said I give it a try and uh, it's worked pretty well so this is Pete N63 cup N6QW I'm going to be clear and this is a tour of the uh, of the hybrid transceiver and I'm really pleased how it turned out